Hello and welcome to Paul Ames Visual Journalist and today we're going to be talking about the Sigma 28 to 70 f2.8 DG DN lens and in this case for Sony FE mount. Now there was a time not so long ago when every standard zoom that seemed to be coming out was around the 24 to 70 and if it was a fast zoom it was an f2.8 but as the manufacturers got ever set on improving optical performance the lenses got bigger heavier and more expensive then a little while ago Tamron decided to do something new and up the ante and they brought out a 28 to 70 f2.8 that was affordable compact size and lighter weight than uh, the competition and it sold like hotcakes very difficult to get everywhere you look it seems to be out of stock so Sigma decided to get in on the act and they brought out their 28 to 70 and it's part of their contemporary line which means it has a more utilitarian approach to its design it has a rather plain black matte finish and it's made out of Sigma's thermally stable composite a kind of deluxe plastic that has similar thermal expansion properties to that of aluminium the lens is compact and relatively light when compared to other standard zooms with a constant f2.8 aperture but when you pick it up it doesn't feel cheap or flimsy but rather it feels reassuringly dense and solid the lens mount is chrome plated brass and there is an o-ring to prevent the ingress of dust and moisture although Sigma say that it is weather resistant they don't give any indication like other manufacturers as to what that actually means in real terms I think at the moment only Olympus does that with giving their um, cameras and lenses now IPX ratings compared to other lenses there is a distinct lack of controls there's just a focus ring a zoom ring and a focus mode selection button both rings have rather a nice ribbed rubber texture to facilitate a good grip the zoom ring has a very nice 90 degrees throw which has just the amount of resistance it's not too sloppy or too tight the lens barrel extends as you zoom to 70 millimeters it, it extends by about 27 millimeters the focus ring is of the fly by wire type with no hard stops again it's not too loose or too tight and I found it quite pleasant to use in the box the lens comes with a plastic lens hood that bane it's into place securely a nice touch is that the inside of the hood is uh, ribbed to prevent reflections the filter size is 67 millimeters which is nice modest size and helps keep the cost of filters down here are the lens specs and if you wish to know more about them you can pause now when we look at the lens in terms of its optical performance well at 28 millimeters wide open the center of the image is sharp and contrasty the edges are softer and there is a very and I mean very small amount of green fringing switching off the lens correction um, we can see that there is vignetting and barrel distortion at f8 the edges catch up with the center sharpness and by f16 the effects of diffraction are noticeable at 70 millimeters at 2.8 f2.8 the center performance is not as good as the wide end being slightly soft and lacking in contrast in the center with the corners being a little bit worse stop it down to f4 and the center improves considerably and by f8 
the corners are as good as the centre. Again by f16 diffraction is apparent and without the lens profile you can still see vignetting and um, pincushion distortion. Optical resolution charts tell us one thing but let's have a look at what this means in real life with this picture here. When it comes to chromatic aberration, well axial chromatic aberration can be observed when shooting wide open, especially at the minimum focusing distance. This is easily dealt with by stopping down. Um, it's more pronounced at the 70mm end than at the 28 The transverse chromatic aberration is very well controlled and images need to be forensically examined at around 200% to spot it. It is very impressive for a cheaper tier zoom lens. Looking at the diffraction spikes or sun stars, for this lens the nine bladed diaphragm produces 18 points and stopping down to f22 produces the best effect. Flare resistance with this lens is very good. There is little to no veiling flare and just a little ghosting flare. Unfortunately what is apparent is what they call red dot flare also known as sensor flare. This is caused by reflections from the micro lenses on the sensor hitting the rear lens element and then being reflected back onto the sensor again giving these telltale little red blobs usually if arranged in a kind of grid pattern. Looking at the bokeh at uh, 28mm wide open f2.8, the uh, bokeh balls don't have a very round shape. They're a little bit misshapen and have visible onion rings. The tonal transitions are smooth, quite nice. By f8 the balls take on a polygonal shape as to be expected. At 70mm wide open the balls in the centre of the frame are nice and round with some onion rings apparent and at the edges of the frame they have that elliptical cat's eye shape like little rugby balls. The tonal transitions in out of focus areas are again nice and smooth. When it comes to auto performance shooting stills wide open at 28 millimeters the autofocus is very snappy and sticky in daylight with lots of contrast. I shot several sequences of me walking towards the camera and achieved a 100% hit rate. Again, very impressive. At 70mm f2.8, the results weren't quite as impressive, but I averaged out with a hit rate of 81%. When I look back at the, the individual frames, the problem seems to occur when I got very close to the camera and lens and the lens would then struggle to keep up with my movements. It would focus for a couple of frames, lose focus and then reacquire. When I tested for the video autofocus I mounted the camera on my slider with a repeating 20 centimeter movement and then filmed myself walking back and forth. Now at 28mm wide open the lens did very very well with just a couple of moments where it was hesitant. Overall a very good performance. At 70mm the AF wasn't as confident and prone to lose focus and then not re quickly reacquire. I decided to retest this but not using the slider this time and everything was a lot better at both focal lengths. So I can only assume from that that the movement from the slider was stressing the autofocus system too much. Checking for focus breathing I found that it was very minimal which should keep the video crowd very happy. Normally I don't bother checking whether a lens is par focal or not but as the lens had so far done very well I thought I'd give it a go. And surprise, surprise, the Sigma 28 to 70 is indeed par focal, which is very nice at this price point. So while I play uh, 
a selection of images taken with the um, lens, I'll give my conclusion. There have been quite a few criticisms about the Sigma 28-70 to DGDN. A lot of reviewers are moaning about the distortion present when you don't use the lens profile. And I would argue that using corrections like that enables manufacturers to make compact, lightweight and affordable lenses. Others have been very vocal about the reduced performance at the 70mm end. But this is not actually unusual for zoom lenses to be better optically at the wide end and then see a fall off at the, short, at the longer end. Better performance would of course mean bigger, heavier and more expensive lenses. Another criticism made was that at 28mm the lens just isn't wide enough and it really should be a 24 to 70mm f2.8. Well, Sigma do make a 24mm a 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 and it's $600 more expensive and considerably bigger. Sony's GM 24 to 70 f2.8 is 1300 Australian dollars more expensive than this lens. It's 371 grams heavier, 33 millimeters longer and 14 millimeters wider. So what does this mean? If you want a small, compact, f2.8, constant aperture, zoom lens, then some compromise has to be made. And here I think Sigma has the right ch made the right choices. Now I really like standard zooms. I find they fit in with my way of working with just one camera and one lens. I really am at my happiest walking around with um, one camera, one lens, a couple of batteries, a couple of memory cards. This lens with its useful fo close focus ability makes it ideal for shooting small subjects, food and products. Its constant f2.8 aperture is good for low light, flash photography and video purposes. Well, the 70mm at the long end makes it a bit on the short side for some types of portrait uh, photography. The focal range is great for environmental portraiture. Overall, this lens is perfectly suited to being used as an everyday carry or part of a lightweight travel kit. Only very occasionally I wished for something a little bit wider. So what I ended up doing was carrying my Tamron 20mm f2.8 and then everything was just dandy. I really enjoyed using this lens. It's not perfect by any means but it's very solid and workmanlike and it gets, lets you get out and take photos and that is all that matters. Well. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video in the new year. Have a happy Christmas. Goodbye. <laughs>